So today I got a new toy in the shop. It's the Grizzly G0758. It is a male Andrill combo. I advise if anybody's planning on getting this, have help lifting this up. This thing weighs about 170 pounds. Um, it is possible to get it up by yourself. I did. Uh, I lifted this up on my bench by myself, but it is heavy. <laughs> okay, so starting from the top, you're gonna have the motor right up here. This is the drawbar cap. And if we remove this, you'll have your drawbar, which holds your collets and um, all that good stuff, you're chewing. You have the Z hand wheel, Z axis hand wheel, which will lift this whole unit on these rails, this whole unit up and down. You have your Z axis locks, two of them, one right here, one right here. You have the high and low gearbox knob. This allows you to control low speed spindle. Uh, speeds and high speed spindle speeds. I believe on the low setting, the low setting gearbox, it's 100 to 1000 RPMs, and on the high, it's 100 to 2000 RPMs. Okay, next we have the down feed selector. So this will lower and raise your quilt. Okay, next one is the fine down feed hand wheel. This allows you to make micro adjustments on your quill for lowering and raising it. Okay, next we have our uh, spindle speed digital readout unit, which displays your spindle speeds. You have your spindle speed knob, which will raise and lower your spindle speed. Okay, on and off switch. Um, this lock is for the handle. You can bring it down, lock it in place, and then lock the quill down low or up high. Um, we have the uh, spindle position, sorry, spindle position digital readout unit. And this is only for the Z axis. Um, my table does not have a digital readout. This will just be for my Z axis, my up and down. I'll have a digital readout. This is my chip guard. When this is open, it shuts down the whole unit completely. You cannot turn this unit on with this open. It has to be closed. Okay, so then I've got the tabletop, the x-axis hand wheel, and the y-axis hand wheel, the x-axis locks. So this will lock the table in place on the x-axis. I have my table stops, which I have not adjusted yet. These will eventually come out towards the ends. <clears throat> um, let me see. Plug, obviously. Um, I don't know if I'm missing anything. I think that is it. All the features on the Grizzly G0758 mill and drill machine. Um, this, just a guard so that chips don't get into the uh, screws, the uh, screw bars, yeah, that stuff. Uh, so that's just a guard to protect from chips from falling into to this. Okay, another thing that came with the unit is this toolbox. Um, I've already did the inventory on this to make sure everything was in there. Um, and I'll go over these parts with you. So, first thing we got, in here is the drill chuck. I've got a drill chuck. Um, in here is the arbor, the R8 arbor. It comes with a bottle for lubrication, a set of hex heads. And it's supposed to come with a flathead and a Phillip, but somehow I ended up getting two Phillip heads. But that's okay, because I have flatheads in my garage, so. And it comes with three open-end wrenches, so six different si uh, sizes. It comes with a spindle pin. Hopefully you guys can see that. 
Um, it came with a couple of bolts in here that wasn't on the list of inventory. So I don't know if that's for hold downs because it kind of has a T-slot style to it that I'm thinking might go in here for a hold down. So I didn't see, I didn't see anything on the list for these, but I have them. So pretty sure that's what they're for. And, and it comes with two extra fuses. I'm assuming these are for the digital readout units. The next thing I have to do is all these bare metal spots that have all this packing grease on there. I've got to completely get all of that stuff off of everything. Um, there's even stuff on the hand wheels. I've got to get all this stuff uh, on the bottom table, the top table, uh, Z axis, all, everything. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, the book gives you um, some degreaser options. Um, you can also use WD-40. Um, I have something like WD-40, it's called Coral, that I will be using. So I'm going to get that done. And then we can go on to a test run and then breaking the spindle in. So let me get started on cleaning up all this grease. Okay, so I just finished cleaning, cleaning this all up. So everything's nice and clean. I think I just have to plug this in, do a test run, which is making sure it just starts and stops and that the chip breaker will automatically shut it off. And then after that, I'll do a break-in, a spindle break-in. So, let me get this plugged in, make sure I'm not missing any steps, and we'll get going on this test. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is just make sure that the stop button is pushed in. That way when I do plug it in, it doesn't start up on me. Next thing is, I'm going to switch this to the low setting on the gearbox. Plug in the mill. Okay, so let's go ahead and push the on button. rotating clockwise looking from the top view. If you look at the bottom view, it's going counterclockwise, which is the correct direction. I'm going to go ahead and press the off button, open the chip breaker, and try and start it. And nothing starts, so that's a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and click this off again. 
close this up. Now, that is all that is on the test run. Now for the spindle break-in, I've got to go through a series of rotations for a certain amount of time. So the first one is 50 RPMs on the low setting, press on, run for 10 minutes without stopping the spindle. I didn't have to go to 500 and then 1000 RPMs, each for 10 minutes. And then press the off button. So that's the first half of breaking it in. Then I rotate the knob to the high setting or the gearbox, press on, run the machine for a minimum of 10 minutes, and it should be on the low speed on the spindle speed knob, which should be about 100 RPMs for 10 minutes. And then without stopping the spindle, I gotta go up to 1000 and then 2000 for 10 minutes each. And then off. And that should complete it. So, I'm already on the low setting. I'm gonna turn it on. And we'll let this go up to speed and then we'll set it at 50 RPMs. And then I'll wait 10 minutes. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry it was so lengthy, but it did cover everything from unboxing the machine to cleaning it to bringing it in, setting it up, and using it. So it was bound to be a little bit lengthy. <laughs> um, there is one other thing that I wanted to share with everybody. I got yet another tool for the shop that I'm excited about. I have a new dovetail saw. The last time I tried to cut dovetails was the first attempt, and I tried it with this flimsy, cheap saw that they claim to be a dovetail saw and it didn't work so well, it was hard to keep a straight line. And So I finally went out, got me a new saw because I have a couple of projects that I want to do dovetails with. So I'll be practicing a little bit, videotaping a little bit of me practicing, and then hopefully getting those projects out and all of that will be taped. So look forward to those videos. Um, I think that's it. Uh, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, share, and until next time, stay safe.